Hey, fellow word nerds, thanks for joining us. Tonight we are talking about common mistakes that writers make. And I think we are going to go down the line here and uh, say what sort of mistakes we ourselves fall into the most. So we'll start with Megan on my left here. Um, <laughs> I was telling the word nerds before we started that this is hard because there are so many mistakes. <laughs> but I think my biggest one is I'm terrible at writing romance. And so I will always just, given the choice, I will introduce the love interest, have them fight a little bit, and then suddenly they're just making out. <laughs> like, it's not really any skill set. Isn't, isn't really that how real life happens? Right? Isn't that how it happens in real life? I mean, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally. That's how that's I get all my <laughs> dates. <laughs> I'm terrible okay. at that build-up. <laughs> uh, the one I came up with is more on, like, a... Sorry, wrestling with a puppy at the side here. Um, <laughs> more on like the technical level, because like word repetition is I have all mm. these words that I lean on way too much. I'm really good mm. at picking out repetitive words from other people's manuscripts. But in mine, there are words like just and but and okay that I will just, I just read past them in my own mm. work, because I'm so used to saying them, and I'm so used to seeing them there, because I use them all the time. Mm. It's hard to make mm. myself stop. Mm -hmm. Yes. And Erica? This one is super easy. <laughs> it is adverbs. Oh, God. <laughs> I hoard adverbs like no one else because I just love them, and I know it's a problem, and I'm trying to cut down. I'm trying to, you know. <laughs> but you yourself off. I just, I, I don't know. I also get, I think sometimes I'm too into certain descriptions and I don't want to cut them, even if it's unnecessary. I'm like, but it's pretty. <laughs> I like this line. So adverbs and some of my descriptions can be just kind of like needs to be toned down. Too flowery, maybe. <laughs> and uh, Emma. Um, I think my biggest problem, and I particularly have a problem with this at the beginning of a story, is that I like try to explain things to, like I like, mm -hmm. I always catch myself where I'm like, okay, I have been, like, writing for, like, two pages, and all I'm doing is, like, explaining the character's, like, background or how they feel about something. And I have to, like, go, like, cut all of it out. Because I'm like, I want the reader to understand all this stuff. I'm like, no, I cannot put all of this in. <laughs> I, like, want you to know everything. <laughs> Backstory. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think for me personally, and I know that um, Kelly's caught this more than once, and probably the writer group, the rest of the writer group, too, um, awesome. is I, I show something, um, and then I tell. I was totally going to mention that. It's something I see a lot when beta reading. <laughs> yes. So it'll be like describing something like, like you should describe something, and then I'll be like, she's angry. <laughs> It's not necessary, you already know that. Just, just like, keep making sure that it came out. You didn't figure it out. <laughs> just you want to be really clear. No. I just want to make sure you know. <laughs> so, yeah, that's something I definitely have to work on. As well as, like, words like um, Kelly said, like, I find myself inserting just into everything. I feel like I'm guilty of just, yeah. too. Just, just. Yeah. It's a great word. Yeah. It's just so easy to use. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, right there. Have you guys ever done the thing where you have like the, uh, um, what's it called, a cloud, I guess, where it puts all the words together that you use the most? Have you done that? I've done that before, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what did it end up being? What did it end up being for you guys? Still? Yeah. Or? Still? Weird thing, I talk a lot about people's hands. Like, <laughs> some of my most used words are like, hands, fingers, fingernails. <laughs> I don't know why people's hands. I definitely find I have to like sometimes I have to go back and look at the descriptions I have for people's actions like smiling, shrugging, grimacing, like because a lot of the time I don't like I, I keep it really boring and I need to like switch it up and stuff. So I find that, but for a rough draft, I'll just leave it the way it is and then go back and change things. Especially if characters continue smut like she grinned over it. <laughs> yeah. So. There are definitely certain smirks. action phrases. Yes. Yeah. Smirking. Oh, gosh. There are certain oh, action phrases that I, I cling to. Drug all the time. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's drugging, head tilting. 
You know, if you read a piece out loud, like, you can start to figure out what words or, like, mm -hmm. actions you're overusing. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm listening to the audiobook of Ignite and cringing because I'm like, oh, I should have reworded that. Oh, that needs to change. <laughs> <laughs> Just breathe through it. That's actually like, a good idea. The author says that, too. Like, in mm -hmm. Looking for Alaska and Paper Towns, John Green says deadpan, like, a hundred times. <laughs> <laughs> Just stop it! That no, was so much in Looking for Alaska. Mm. Deadpan? Yeah. Yeah. You see it all the time. Because it's yeah. kind of like one of the... It, his characters are always those kind of people who are like too cool to be like really funny. So they're like, if those deadpan. are the only characters you're going to make, find other ways of phrasing it. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> well, he does the... Um, what's it called? The dream, Manic Pixie Dream Girl. Those aren't deadpan, are they? They're really excited. Though. Sometimes they are. Like oh. someone will say, "I uh, was this a deadpan when she's like, y'all smoke to look cool, I smoke to die, or something?" And it was deadpan. It was kind of like, ah. Uh, mm-hmm. I thought I would think of deadpan as like a flat expression. Yeah. 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 I guess so. You know what? I didn't. The funny thing is, I liked that book. I didn't like her. She was kind of annoying. Melodramatic. Not that that has anything to do with writing mistakes, but I just sort of realized that. <laughs> in Alaska or Paper Towns? In Looking for Alaska. I haven't read Paper Towns. Yeah. I need to. <laughs> Paper Towns is the same way. In Paper, Paper Towns reminded me a lot of Looking you. for Alaska. Yeah, but, the same yeah. type of girl. Yes. And, yeah. and the same type of lead, which is going to say, like, that's kind of a writing mistake. When you make the same characters yeah. over and over again, Mm -hmm. Like, John Green has been this mm -hmm. story again and again. Not so much with The Fault in Our Stars, but beforehand. But. Mm -hmm. but see, like, Augustus is kind of like Manic Pixie Dream Boy. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Fault in Our Stars, he just takes it and gives it a different gender. <laughs> true. And you guys, everyone still loves John Green, but it's definitely... Well, if you really love it, I think on anybody there. else. He's I think on it. anybody else, it would be a, a big flaw that people would hark on. But it's John Green, and he writes such pretty well. <laughs> people kind of, you know, sometimes you excuse certain overused tropes because yeah. the story is good or the writing is good around those tropes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you have to have like, something to make up John for it. Green. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think about um, Paper Towns, because I guess that's like a frequently asked question that he gets is like, hey, you remember how Alaska and Margo are the same person? <laughs> and he claims, I don't know if this is like fact or if it's like in hindsight, but he said that like part of it was done on purpose because Alaska was very much like um, idolized mm -hmm. and he wanted to show like the nasty side of Manic Pixie Dream mm -hmm. Girl. Like he wanted to show that yeah. it's not cute and it's not desirable and at the end of the book I think you do see that interesting in a lot yeah of and in Paper Towns Margo was supposed to completely dismantle the manic pixie dream concept I wouldn't say that it dismantled I, yeah I was gonna say I don't know if that was a successful dismantlement <laughs> Do you guys find that you do that as well? Like fall into the same character tropes or the same character over and over? Um, <laughs> not generally. Like I probably go too far out of my way to try and. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes so, I feel like sometimes like every kind of character, like yeah. one of each, because none of them can be the yeah. same. Like, yeah. In real life, you meet people who are similar, like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> like diversity is such a big issue in YA right now, and then I feel like I grew up, I am a white female who grew up in middle class, not America, but you know. <laughs> so. Yeah. I do like to write very dark American things. Hats. Yeah. And so I feel like a lot of my characters do end up, like, kind of flawed because of the darkness, which... Mm -hmm. Similar things it's come a, from that kind of background. It's one thing, not a carbon copy. I think. Yeah. Well, I think it would be really hard to figure, like, to notice in your own writing that you're writing the same character over and over again because you see them as completely yeah. different characters. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're not writing them like that. So I think you'd have to have someone else point out, be like, hey, this character is this character almost exactly. Mm -hmm. Maybe. I actually, I actually see that a lot in people that write urban fantasy. Because to me, it always seems to be the same 
like butt female that doesn't necessarily start out butt kicking, you know, and like actually when I read a lot of urban fantasy, mm -hmm. I actually got sick of that type of character. Mm -hmm. I felt like I was reading about the same person over and over. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's I why I'm like still adult. tapped out of urban fantasy. I'm just done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, young adult in general, you get a lot of like the female character who starts out like kind of weak, but like ends up like getting really strong and able to like fight everyone. Like that. finds her power and yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I was actually because I'm high school students right now, and I was talking to one, um, and I like found out she had read Throne of Glass, and we were talking about it, and she was like, "What I really mm -hmm. like about it is that like she's someone who like knows how to like fight and kill people from the beginning. Like she's not like mm -hmm. some super girl who grows grows strong. Like she's mm -hmm. like always been that way." Mm -hmm. That's cool. It's cool I, even, that. <laughs> I even don't mind like the diverge goes through like basically hell and back in order to gain that strength. What bothers me is that in urban fantasy, it seems like a lot of time it's these women that haven't had a lot of training and they manage sure. to like kill a demon or whatever that comes after them because they yeah. only have like the ultimate yeah. Yeah. So I get it. <laughs> Like, suddenly she has Charlie's Angel skills that she's never had before. I, that yeah. bugs me, that type of thing. <laughs> There's no work to get to the state yeah. being able to kick butt. And it's usually, like, explained away by, like, she's the child of this yeah. really amazing person. Yeah. You know, like, so she magically has these abilities and doesn't have to work. Or she has yeah. magic. That and it's was... just another play on the chosen one. Uh -huh. Yeah. That's another trope that people really easily fall into, and I uh, that's another mistake that I make too sometimes, is falling into the chosen one trope. But I don't know; it's hard not to do it almost if you're if you're doing fantasy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So because mm -hmm. the whole hero with a thousand faces and everything, mm -hmm. it's like what fiction is built yeah. on, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So is there AC? I think I'm a little bit behind I here. Am I lagging? It. I don't think you're lagging. I might be lagging. I think my I'm internet is going really slow right now. I think mine is due. <laughs> oh dear. What were you saying, um, Megan? But I actually have been really excited. I haven't seen in the manuscripts I've been reading for uh, my internship. I haven't been seeing as many chosen one tropes, and I really enjoyed it. People taking on much more personal plot lines, you know, very character driven, and I think that's awesome. Like, I want to see so much more of that. Mm hmm. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. What do you guys see a lot when you beta read or critique new writers? Nothing specific to any particular person, of course, but just like in general. Uh, I've seen a lot of similar sentence structure just over and over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. um, mostly like in my fiction writing class I'll see this a lot. Or a lot of just blunt sentences that are only telling and there's no mm -hmm. showing and it's just very like grating mm -hmm. to read. Like don't get me wrong, you can tell sometimes but Sometimes you really got to show instead of tell, or it just reads really poorly. Mm -hmm. Now, this is something that I hear all the time, and something that I say all the time, like to like, show don't tell, to a point where it like grates on me a little bit because it's advice that people tend to just like continue to give out. Mm -hmm. Like, how would you guys explain it to somebody that maybe hadn't necessarily heard that phrase before? Um, show. I think it's used most for emotion. Show emotion in ways instead of just saying like she's angry. Like how how does she look when you're angry? Or is she you know, mannerisms, tone of voice, there are different ways to again, unless it calls for something that's more blunt and you can use a tell sentence. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm trying to go with show. Facial expressions is another one where I'll just see it so quickly if he looked annoyed. But it, it's easy, mm. I can't do it off the top of my head, but if you put a little time into it, it is easy enough to, to show someone being annoyed through what their face mm -hmm. looks like. But Google, yeah, like just Google hops. annoyed yeah. person. Yeah. Or the emotion thesaurus. I love the emotion thesaurus. It's kind of perfect for mm -hmm. this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Body language is also huge, too. Even if you just like spend five minutes in the room with a really irate person, you can see how mm -hmm. like you know they slam the door, they stomp their feet, they're standing with their... You know, 
arms crossed over their chest, like it, body language and how mm -hmm. someone moves definitely is a big indicator, even if they don't say anything about how mm -hmm. they're feeling. Mm -hmm. Also, like show don't tell applies to like character descriptions too. Like instead of saying he was old, you can describe how he walks with a limp or how he has a cane, mm -hmm. how his hair is thinning at the back, like stuff like yeah. that. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It really comes down to taking more time to flesh things yeah. out rather than just learning yeah. it just so you can move on to the next thing. Exactly. It's being more creative in your descriptions mm -hmm. than just exactly yeah. what you see. Yeah. yeah. It's also really, it's hard because show don't tell, like, covers so much, I think, mm -hmm. and that's where I think people get a little confused, too. Um, like, a character, it'll be in their point of view, and they'll be like, oh, this is, you know, I live in this house with three other people, and this is my roommate so-and-so, and he does this, and he works for this, he works for the CIA, and I'm like, okay, you as the character are telling me all of this mm -hmm. when you could show me it. Like, you mm -hmm. could show me that her roommate's this bulky guy that is still, like, really jumpy because he has um, PTSD from having been with the CIA or whatever. And you don't have to tell it to me through your character. You could show me it through yeah. that other character. You mm -hmm. know, stuff like that. So that's also show versus tell. All right. <laughs> that could be a whole different chat. Mm -hmm. I think. <laughs> Any other else? big mistakes? Something else I see a lot of, um, and she like first drafts is problems with POV and like POV yes. not being consistent. It's mm -hmm. a really big problem, particularly if you like trying to do like third like head jump constantly. Yeah, Ugh, head hopping drives me crazy. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and um, I always forget. The name supposed to be head hopping. Um, uh, omniscient. <laughs> omniscient point mm -hmm. of view. Yeah, and I always have a really hard time um, just like figuring out whether I should say something if I'm beta reading and that's happening because I'm like maybe they meant the, uh, to be an omniscient yeah. point of view. Mm -hmm. But to so get me, the point you, yeah, when you don't know like whose head you're in, you're like yeah. I don't know who you're thinking this. Yeah. I've heard yeah. about that before. And maybe they mean to be in omniscient, but it's not working, and then I have to be yeah. like, well, I don't think it's working for you. And in YA, it's, you can do it. I'm not going to say you can I never make it, it work, lot. but it, yeah. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. the diviners was the only, actually the only thing I can think of that was YA that I've read recently that's omniscient point of view. Yeah. And that did it really well. <laughs> Yeah, head hopping is definitely something that I see a lot while beta reading as well. It suddenly will get thoughts from the bad guy or whatever, and I'm like, uh. Yeah. <laughs> she, she doesn't what? know this information. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's just like whatever's convenient for what you need the readers to know at the time, and that does not work. Mm -hmm. You're like, well, I need them to know this about this character, so now we're suddenly going to jump to them. Yeah, yeah, that doesn't work. Yeah. Usually for me, it's it comes down to three basic things when that I'll notice most is point of view. Either it's not working in first person or third person. Tense, if mm -hmm. they tell it past mm -hmm. and it's really awkward to read, or yeah. or when they accidentally awkward. like switching. Which I'm so bad at that. And then and then pacing. If the pacing is mm -hmm. way too fast or just went on. Yeah. Those are the three mm -hmm. things that break it for me. Mm -hmm. Pacing is a really hard one. I still struggle with pacing. Mm -hmm. Pacing mm -hmm. is... It's also a subjective one in some ways, but like, yeah. mm -hmm. like Erica was saying, she gets lost in descriptions and stuff, whereas I like to keep... Mm -hmm. I'm more plot-driven than... Like, she writes much yeah. prettier prose than I do. So mm -hmm. I just it definitely comes mm -hmm. down to like the voice of the author. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, for some people... The action, they write it so well that it just keeps moving, so the pacing yeah. is pretty fast through the whole thing. Mm -hmm. I'm someone who doesn't speak through pacing, because I like to pause and be like, hey, look at this, and look at that, now let's move on. Yeah. Like, that too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think there's like personal preference and like yeah. the author personally, but there's also like a point where it's like too yeah. fast or too yeah. Yeah. Like, And then they get this, this and this, and they like, don't pause for anything. Like that. <laughs> Oh, I yeah. have that. Just like a like, bullet list. Things yeah. and things and things and things and things happening, and like I'll go back through and have to be like, oh, 
They've been <laughs> running <laughs> for like 12 <laughs> chapters in a row. <laughs> that's, not possible. that's not physically possible. So are they marathon runners? <laughs> and again, this is probably something you're not going to pick up on yourself necessarily. Mm -hmm. like, that's where a beta reader comes in handy. He's like, dude, yeah. you need to slow it down. Yeah. Before <laughs> this is boring me. Cut it well, off. Come on, get moving. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I do think, though, know, the best way to pick it up yourself is to spend at least two weeks, preferably like one or two months, away from your work. Mm -hmm. And then when you go back, it'll be like, who wrote this? Like, I don't remember any of it. It's great. It's, it's also, yeah, it's also good for an ego boost sometimes if you go back, like, a couple months later and you're like, well, this isn't bad. Like, <laughs> See, I've got, I've got a, maybe a blessing or a curse or a little bit of both of, I have very bad memory, so I'll write yeah. something, and then, like, the next week when I go back to edit it, I'm like, did I write this? this I wrote this. <laughs> now, Elle <laughs> like, oh slept God, this in horrible. the middle of the night and wrote this for me. <laughs> 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 these lines, I'm like, this works, and thank goodness past Erica wrote this down, because future Erica is astounded. <laughs> for, for five seconds, and then it's on to editing. I um, heard from, I follow Janet Reed, um, the literary agent on Facebook, and she said that one of the things she suggests for learning how to pace is typing out a Stop. different author's entire book. I knew I was like, that sounds like a lot of work. Uh, oh, wow. But she's I mean, here's works. I think it, I think it would be a time for that. I don't know if writing <laughs> yeah. a whole book would work, Ain't maybe a short story, but I feel like if I'm typing out someone else's story, I'm going to start to fall into their style and yeah. live my own because well, I'm kind of influenced by it. Yeah. Did you see the blog post that was attached to that? Yeah, I did. I was doing it and he mm -hmm. said it helped. I don't know if I would be able to do that though. Because that's a lot of time dedicated. Like, maybe yeah. ultimately when you're reading a book, you jot out the plot points as they happen so you can go that's back over and figure out these are what, like, the yeah, like pacing from work. that. Yeah. Or put post-it yeah. notes for any big yeah. event. Mm -hmm. What's that noise? Um, oh. but I definitely think there can be a lot to be learned from just reading books with an editing mindset. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, I've been revising a lot recently, mm -hmm. and I have also been trying to read Dorothy Must Die for, like, months. Like, I really, really don't want to DNF it, and I really want to finish it, but I've been learning a lot about pacing from reading it. I'm like, oh, yeah. this is why I'm not enjoying this. Mm -hmm. so I had slow. the exact same yeah, problem with that same. book, yeah. and then on yeah. Friday, it was sitting on my coffee table, and I needed a bookmark for something else, so I took it from that one, and I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I just, that is, you know, that goes back to our previous conversation of reading good books help you write, and also reading bad books helps you write because you're like, wow, well, this is not what I want to do. So here's the mistakes, and here's how to avoid it. So but it's definitely it an example of how subjective pacing is too, because I know lots of people that love that book. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so that's definitely. really a hard one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If yeah, anything, like it'll help you find your style. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I know I have people, like, I had the first beta reader who read Emma be like, I am exhausted after reading this book, so I'm like, okay, I need to slow the pace down. And then I had a second beta reader say, it's too slow at the beginning. So that's when you kind of have to, like, find some way to meet in the middle or just uh, keep it the way it is. So I don't know. Make your own decision. Uh, Erica, I love my that goodness. Plot. crazy plot. <laughs> it is, yeah, it's uh, a bit ominous. It's so <laughs> That's why I love it. It's kind of in the dark room. Can you see my? I've got a raven above me. Let's see if we can see it. There's a raven. Wow, that's yeah. awesome. That's amazing. I feel like yeah, living in a potion. Super spooky in the house. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, about the um the comments you got from beta readers about you know so conflicting. A while ago, I actually was going through reviews for Madly Deeply, and I was trying to compile. Like, I like to go through reviews and find out what worked and what didn't work from other people's perspectives so I can hopefully be more objective in editing future stories. Mm -hmm. And it came down to... ...and the ending and the description, and they also hated the characters, the pacing, the plot, <laughs> the setting, and the ending. And I was like, mm -hmm. I don't know what to do here. 
So a lot of it is very, you know, subjective, but yeah. there are definitely, like, mm -hmm. glaring mistakes that, that you can still, that come without the objective subjectiveness of it all, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think a huge thing that I've been seeing in all of the manuscripts that I've been rejecting lately is um, either a passive main character Mm. Um, where things are just happening to them and they're just like, oh, this is happening now, this is happening now, or a main character who is very active and I have no clue why they're doing what they're doing. Like, it doesn't make any sense to me. Mm. Yeah. So it feels like the main character, yeah, it feels Motivation. like the main character is being pushed by the author to do things that aren't natural. I think those are notes that Kelly and I have given multiple times, asking, like, why are they doing this? What's the motivation behind it? And if you have motivation, like an explanation, that you can work into the story without being like, this is why this character is doing this, you know? Mm -hmm. It could help, but sometimes you have to reevaluate what they're doing and if they're the ones yeah. that should be doing it. Mm -hmm. Same with, like, um, query critiques. Like, I've heard from so many people that, like, especially in Pitch Wars, one lady tweeted that the main mistake she was seeing was that there was no stakes in the query, which probably yeah. meant to her that there were no stakes in the story. Like, and there was no character motivation, which is what gives you the stakes a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's a huge one. Books that have no stakes, I just, like, I skim them. Yeah, what's the point like, of reading them at that point? Mm -hmm. there's, there's gotta be, there's gotta be some kind of point to everything, even in yeah. contemporary, there's some kind of stake. You know, yeah. something is... A relationship at stake or something. Mm -hmm. What also, are the character's goals and why can't they achieve them? What's the yes, point? and every scene the character needs to have a goal, and there needs to be something that's making the character not achieve that goal. So that by the end of the scene, they change their method, and that leads to the new scene. Awesome advice. <laughs> like the soapbox. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Every scene. Bring my dog. Another mistake I see a lot is in um, beginnings, like how people start their chapter one, falling into really like bad tropes like they're waking up or they're looking in the mirror and I like and I've ranted about this probably a million times but the being chased through the woods by some kind of unknown monster Megan's nodding I can see you nodding you get that a lot too right okay I see that huge no one wants it don't do it drives me crazy not just me I agree I was gonna. It quiet. It was quiet for a second. I was going to agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> I would, however, like to see a book begin with someone chase someone being the unknown assailant. Ah, I think that would be an interesting twist. But he's yeah. the chaser instead of the chasey. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. like someone chasing an innocent person through the woods. Ooh, that would be good. <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> There you go. There's a way to start your story. On that same yeah. note, Rose commented about first sentences, that she's noticed mm. her first sentences will all, always be a fail. That <laughs> first sentences are hard. They are. I love first sentences. <laughs> I love them. I don't know. I, I It's hard because there's different advice, too, like, oh, don't start with dialogue and then but some of the best books start with dialogue. And yeah. I don't know if that's a mistake. Yeah. That's a hard I've, one. I've always tried to not start my books with dialogue. Mm -hmm. um, mostly because what I heard is and I tend to agree with this is that you're in somebody's head or mouth, I guess, before you know mm -hmm. who they are. Mm -hmm. So I you know, intro sentence and then dialogue works fine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah, intro sentences, opening lines are just <sighs> yeah. Part of the problem with starting with dialogue also that I've heard is like you have like your dialogue and then you have to go back and explain. It's kind of the same thing you were saying. Like you have to explain who the person is and where mm -hmm. they are and what the setting. You know, so it's like you like start with a piece of dialogue and then you have to explain a bunch of stuff before you can like continue. They have to stuff. mini info dump. To yeah. Be like, yeah, just so you know, good. this is let's catch you yeah. up. On this. Yeah. yeah, not good right off the bat. Not good. But you can you can do it and make it good. But it's Alter Claire did it in City of Bones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I actually, um, the first manuscript I ever wrote 
uh, like all the way through. I went back to do revisions like right after I had read City of Bones and I realized that like I had the exact same first line <laughs> as City of Bones. It's like this is awkward. What's the first line again? What is it? It's you've got to be kidding me. Oh right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you can definitely break the rules if you do it right. Mm -hmm. I like first line, so usually if a really good first line will kind of, it will tell you the tone of the story, it'll give you a little hint of the mm -hmm. plot, maybe it'll foreshadow something, mm -hmm. like that's a super early foreshadowing, mm -hmm. but if you do that, and it yeah. works, then it's awesome. Then I like when the first line gives you like a good taste of the character's voice. Um, the first line that I write almost always is because um, there's always that moment when you like, aha, you like sit up in bed and you the character has said something in their voice yeah. in your head and you're like, I need to write this down right now. That's like almost always my first yeah. line. Mm -hmm. Inevitably. It'll smack mm -hmm. you in the face. Yeah. There's not a lot of planning for well, it's it. Like, you can't and I think part of the reason that happens is like that's what hooked you into writing the story. So you like want it to hook people into reading the story. <laughs> Definitely. And we actually, for those interested, we did do an entire live chat about first impressions, first lines, first paragraphs, first pages, first chapters. So you should go and watch that later. Mm -hmm. To hear yeah. more. <laughs> <laughs> because it's a big topic. It is. Yeah. And it's an important one. Mm -hmm. Because, like, if the first chapter is really boring, I'm not going to keep reading, probably. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I might give it to the book. chapter and yeah. try, but usually I'll just be like, uh... The first time I tried to read the first uh, Harry Potter book, I ended up putting it down for, like, another six months before I started it again, because the first chapter was so boring. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jen commented... She's not saying it's never been done successfully, but when she reads a book that starts with dialogue, she ends up skimming ahead to see who's talking and then goes back to start reading again. Because yeah. she wants to know who is doing the speaking before she actually hears the speaking. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's the problem yeah. with that. I do the same thing. Mm -hmm. so you, don't know, trip. you don't really know how the line is delivered either, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have no way to tell. Yeah, exactly. It's a woman or a man or, or a dog really angry, or a yeah. dog. Yeah, you're going to end up using <laughs> talking right. dog, <laughs> using adverbs, and then you fall into my trap of hoarding <laughs> adverbs, and they spill yeah. out of your pockets. I like I like adverbs too, like sometimes a little too much, but I always think J.K. Rowling used them, and I think she yeah. did. Yeah, but <laughs> your pockets thing totally reminded me of Tahara Mafi. She uh, loves uh, saying that there are letters in the pockets. She's yeah. pulling words out of her pockets, and I'm like, you can't have a word in a pocket. You just You'd be can't surprised. Have You'd be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> or lips like pillows. I'm sorry. Yeah, lips like pillows. I'm like taking notes for when we do our chat on Shatter Me. <laughs> <laughs> no pillow, no no pillow lips. I should say. No pillow lips. No. To it me, that was weird. Yeah, to me, that was incredibly lips. unattractive. <laughs> and I was like, I don't want to be kissing. <laughs> yeah, that's Bro, got stung by a bee. Give him a break, you guys. <laughs> <I'm> allergic <laughs> reaction. <laughs> he shouldn't be kissing anyone anyway if he got bit by a, it's, it's, by a bee. It's it mouth hurt. to mouth. They need to help. He can't <laughs> breathe. He's Which it's is an funny, emergency. Some people like. I hate that book or love that book, and I loved it, but there were still definite parts that I was like, that was a mistake. I, I hated that book. There. I loved that series. That's so funny. Looking back on it, I think the mistakes of the first book, part of it was probably just like she was an early writer, but I think mm -hmm. a lot of it was also done on purpose to show. Intentional, definitely. Yeah, which was great. We're going to mm -hmm. have so much fun talking about that <laughs> book. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This but I do think I think that like a year for the next book, I would not have picked up the second one. Because I just, I would have been like, I hated the first book. And so yeah. I almost wish they had like all come out at once. I liked the first <laughs> book. I, I know a lot of people didn't, but I did. I still liked it in spite of like some of the language I didn't like. But I still enjoyed the story. Which was what made me read the second. Mm -hmm. yeah, I had I like, lots of problems that I'll save yeah. for later. Yeah, like, I still, I still haven't read the second and third 
So it's like, but I'm going to make But the body suit pisses me off. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. She's so upset. Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. And now she's, oh. <laughs> Whoa. To distract Megan, we've got another question. This is from Jordan. What are mistakes we see in first person point of view novels and how characters describe their appearances? Mirror scene. Ah, good. I'm guilty of this. Um, I, do, I really don't want to resort to the mirror scene. My point of view character doesn't meet until uh, my point of view characters don't meet until over halfway through the novel and feel like giving descriptions then would be too late. This is a really hard one, and it's something that I struggle with, too, in first-person point of view, because you need to be deep in this person's head because it's their point of view. And rarely do you ever walk down the street thinking, like, oh, the wind is blowing through my long hair. chestnut hair. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I wake up every morning I and I wake up yeah. and think, man, my short pink hair and my pale skin is yeah, exactly. bright in this <laughs> Yeah. Nor do I ever think like I'm looking at that man with my deep brown eyes. Like you don't, <laughs> you don't say things. I like think that quite often. Yeah, so. you don't say things like that to, your, to yourself, and it needs to be, um, it needs to feel natural. Like maybe yeah. another character could comment, on, "Wow, your hair is really long now," or yeah. I don't know. It needs mm. to feel organic. Well, see, what yeah. I find so hard is that, like, especially in first point, person point of view. Like, the only time I think about what I look like, other than if I'm going out and, like, I have clothes on, right? Um, on is when I'm looking in the mirror, and yeah. I'm like, oh, God, I've got this here. Like, my eyeshadow is, or my mascara is running down my face. This is not good. Or my yeah. hair is a mess. And it's only when I'm looking at myself that I think that. I'm not just mm. sitting yeah. there and, like, man, my hair is probably a mess. <laughs> my hair is awesome. <laughs> I think, I think um, Kelsey Mack. Mac? Mackie? Mackie. Mackie. I think it's Mackie. Mackie. <laughs> and I said her she name wrong all the time she was watching us. It drove me crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she does a great job of this in Damsel Distressed um, mm -hmm. because Imogen's um, physical appearance is very important to mm -hmm. her mm -hmm. being, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. And that's a good example of showing and not telling. Like, yeah. How do you describe it? She could have she just said, I'm overweight, but she was instead showing like she was having trouble sitting in like the theater seats. Because mm -hmm. she was so she hiked out. her pants over her muffin top. Yeah. 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 Uh, She's okay. like, this guy's 22, but isn't doing anything that mm. has to do with this or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And right. saying like, I am overweight, or I feel overweight, or, you know, I'm not as skinny as this girl or that girl. It was more subtle and kind of... I don't like you knew obviously what was happening. Body shape is easier so. though, and like, cause I imagine it'd be hard, easier to work in a tall character or a short character than my hair is blonde. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, part of me feels like you know, that sort of thing, unless it's pivotal to who the character is, it isn't that important. Need to be like anyone. I don't know, yeah. I don't know Imogen's hair color. I don't remember. Yeah. I don't no. remember. Her. I, no. I don't remember either. I was just thinking about it. It's like, did she? Have it varies really? person to person. Like I personally. Like, it does, yeah. and, I, and I don't overdo character descriptions for my own because I'll just let the, my reader figure out what they want the character yeah, to be like. But for other people, they're... they like to have that, yeah. especially for, a, like, I think ro heavily romantic books. They want to yes. have a picture of both people. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. sure. I actually I think get... some... Go ahead. Um, I, I was just going to say, I actually get that question a lot on Wattpad, like, what does this person look like in your story? Because I am the type of writer that doesn't go into heavy character descriptions specifically from the, like, first person point of view, because mm -hmm. I don't like to spend a lot, I don't think it's necessary unless it's pivotal to the story, like we were saying before. But there are definitely readers that want to know, like, mm -hmm. every last detail, and like, what, what is her hair color, what is her eye color, what type, mm -hmm. what type of skin does she have, and... Yeah, and I actually yeah, and put my characters on the covers of my books and like this. At that point, you could have the secondary character be like, "I saw this girl who looked X, Y, and Z," or you could just mm -hmm. like super cheat and not write it in your book and have like a character profile on your website or blog. Yeah, you yeah. don't need to mm -hmm. include it in the mm -hmm. book for those, but for those fans who really, really want to know what everybody looks like, you can mm -hmm. your little profiles. Like, this is what yeah. I look like. Mm -hmm. comes in when you mention something later when your reader has already established the character yeah. looking a certain yeah. way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if the yeah. character has something something that comes in later, like 
say they have really curly problem hair and it gets out of control if it gets wet and later that's mentioned and then yeah, but that doesn't already... come up to book two when people yeah are already... exactly mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah if it's that type of thing and it comes in later definitely mm -hmm. but you don't necessarily and know that yeah and it's, it's like gonna I... start raining on your character yeah. <laughs> I like to have I like to have like little bits of just like I like to be able to picture them somewhat the way like the author mm -hmm. pictures them yeah. but I think like Basically, like you just don't want to like say it all in one paragraph. Like I look like this, or and this, and this. Like yeah, you'd be like, I pulled my like blonde hair into a ponytail. Like that's a really easy way that you just like add one word to the sentence. Yeah, about what the character's doing or, because you know, like, she goes outside and it's hot, and so she pulls her blonde hair into a ponytail or something. You know, if you, if you mm -hmm. pick a feature or two, and I think mm -hmm. I talked about this a while ago, a, a feature or two that you want to like really highlight mm -hmm. on your character. That way, you're not like. Yeah. Standing on them, they have yeah. short hair and this color hair and this color yeah. eyes and these kind of lips and this is how tall they are and this is the shape of the rest of their body. Mm -hmm. You know, like you don't have to get so mm -hmm. specific. Yeah. You're not creating mm -hmm. a same shape. Or are you? <laughs> oh. I will say though, like, I like when people highlight a couple of traits or like a handful of traits and those are the mm -hmm. big ones and I can fill in the gaps. But I think it is possible to take it too far. Mm -hmm. Like, um, when I read, I'm so sick of the phrase, moonlit colored hair from the murder <laughs> complex. Like, uh, every time that even the mean. female main character was described, <laughs> it was like, her hair is the color of moonlight. That's I was like, I don't understand. That could be white, white, white hair, or that could be, yeah. like, dark well, it's like, hair. Well, it's, like it's like the guy in Delirium who's on. I, who, whose autumn hair leaves. is like autumn leaves. <laughs> and literally, I'm like autumn leaves. Literally, he's, leaves in there. he's just rolled around in the woods. Mm -hmm. yeah. Speaking of, I think, I think it's it like described constantly. Like I, I yeah. don't like when a physical yeah. feature is described over and over again. It's like give it to me like near the beginning so that like people who want to know it know yeah. it. But like, I don't remember times that I'm like, yeah. okay, I get it. Like, yeah, yeah, you can yeah, punch exactly. it a few times, but yeah. you don't want to. Because if, if you just have it like once or twice at the beginning, then. People who want to know it know it, and people who like don't care can skim over it. You exactly. know, when you put it constantly. People who don't care are like, okay, I get it. I'm tired of reading. And it, this yeah, it gets really annoying. It's like I said before. Yeah. I said it before, like in um, the girl with the steel corset. I'm like, I swear to God, if I hear the term her rope-like hair one mm. more friggin' time, like, yeah. I know that she has dreadlocks, and you don't have to keep shoving mm. it in down my throat. You know, yeah. and, and I actually like, read other reviews mm -hmm. where people said the same thing. Yeah, and I feel like yeah, and I think. <laughs> I think readers who like want to know what the character looks like are going to like be looking for it in the beginning. Yeah, yeah. and they'll remember. You don't need to worry about maybe they missed it. Like if they want to know, they'll be looking for it. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes we just like latch on to these really pretty like mm -hmm. oh, describing his hair as autumn leaves is beautiful, or saying mm -hmm. she has hair like moonlight is a really awesome metaphor. Just um, one, and it can <laughs> be as mm -hmm. long as like you. Salt and pepper it, like. Yeah, it's certainly, certainly there's other parts where you're like, her hair is amount. really white. Mm -hmm. It's definitely in the amount that it's used, and if it's used, like, if it's only described in that way, it can get so annoying. It's like, we get it. Like, can you give me another clue as to yeah. what her hair color is, since yeah. it yeah. might be hard to picture this or that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But like when it's only like, described in one one way, you start picturing it literally being that thing. Like she just yeah. like it's just moonlight streaming off her head. Like, <laughs> <laughs> if that's the only that's way to describe it, it might actually be that. <laughs> I yeah. think if you are determined to describe your character from a first person point of view and you don't want to put in that awkward like I flipped my blonde hair over my shoulder and looked at him with my blue eyes because that's terrible <laughs> you can say you can work in work it in in a different way like she looks at an old class photo of her and is like wow my hair's grown so much since then or oh that was such a bad color of dye I'm so glad I went back to the natural blonde you know it can be something yeah. subtle but it has to work with the story it can't yeah. be just like this random scene at, or yeah. that laundry list of descriptions yeah. mm -hmm. so and I think you and can do like really unique ways that like really mm -hmm. contribute to the voice yeah. like mm -hmm. um, for describing eye color like most people's eye color is like really pop when they cry <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, my true. eyes must look so good right now even though I'm like super depressed <laughs> just like something yeah. weird like that that would contribute not just to building an actual physical sketch. Or she has like a weird eyeliner. color of eyeliner because of her color of eyes, or like whatever. Yeah, so yeah get creative ways. with it. 
Family yeah. members is another good one. If she has the same color eyes as her dad, then she can look at her dad's mm -hmm. eye color without being all like, mm -hmm. yeah. And it's like, yeah, you're, it's like you know, you, you go to the family reunion and your aunt's like, oh, you have your dad's eyes, and you talk about yeah. your freaking dad's eyes for half an hour. Mm -hmm. You know, there's always somebody that can, can say that, too. But yeah. like I said, as long as it's not like, just shoved into the story. Yeah, or yeah. yeah. and you, you like, want... You want the physical physical descriptions to help build the characters yes. for like the actual character in some there way for a too. Reason. Yeah. If you find it, yourself shoving in the description, just take it out mm. and leave it out. Yeah, like is she like obsessed with her blonde hair, or does she like hate the color of her hair? You know, like that mm -hmm. can help mm. you a lot. Be be subtle in yeah. how you use it. It's you don't want a huge chunk of just. Yeah. Yeah, like two pages of descriptions. Yeah. Nobody's like, what I look like. This is what my mom gonna... looks like. This is what my yeah. brother looks like. People are gonna yeah. pass through that and just skim and skip mm -hmm. until they're like, okay, back to the action. Like a couple lines here or there will work great, and really, you don't need to describe in extreme detail unless it's no. significant what they yeah. look like. Mm -hmm. I'll actually stop mm -hmm. reading if I get into this like solid paragraph of what the character looks like. So I'm like, I'm so bored and I, I don't have time to read this. I'm going to read something See, else. Yeah. I like description. I like if it's creative and not just like, oh yeah, yeah this color hair and it looks like this. You have to be really creative with it, but also, yeah, for sure. but I just like being able to picture things because, and this wasn't physical appearance, but in the Delirium books when they kept saying Portland, I always pictured Portland, Oregon, and then Maybe. I found this yeah. Portland, Maine, and I was just like, what? Uh -huh. <laughs> Like spun around because I'm like, gotta go across the country. Uh -huh. Portland. Uh -huh. God, that messed me up so bad. <laughs> me too. <laughs> me too. When she, when she ends up in New York and she walked there, I'm like, that's a long walk. was <laughs> <laughs> possible? And then it was later, it was Maine. I was like, oh, that makes more sense. Wow, oh, that should have been cleared up right away. That's so like, good. Yeah, for, for like a book and a half, I was like, Portland. Oregon, 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 Oregon. Yeah. Then, right? <laughs> well, I, think it's, I think I remember it being mentioned like once in the first book, but I still kept oh. thinking it's Portland, Oregon. <laughs> that was like mentioned that one time. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, I think another one of those things that you just don't want to mess around with, and you don't want to make like metaphorical veiled things oh. about I is rape. What you're gonna say? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No just like, descriptions, please. Do yeah, not compare no any food. skin color yeah. to food. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just, <no>. So, <laughs> just, also, I've heard some descriptions that are just very offensive in that regards. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And, you know, it's sometimes I understand that it can be, like, if you really want the race to be clear, it can be hard to make it clear without starting to get, like, careful, bud. Careful. Or, you know... <laughs> Or you can just say their race. Like, it doesn't have to be a taboo thing. That, yeah. Like, they, they don't oh, yeah. Know, but it's like, yeah. Yeah. It. But it's, like, skirted around. It's like, he is this and looks kind of this. And just, like, chill out. Mm -hmm. yeah, my advice there is just and like, it. Yeah, just say it. And I think, I don't know. Then, like, no one's going to accuse you of, like, doing anything dumb if you just like come right out and say it and no one's mm -hmm. going to accuse you later of trying to add diversity where it wasn't mm -hmm. if you just say it right from the beginning. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, we've got a question just about if we have any writing online. Yes, uh, pretty much everybody here is on Wattpad. Kelly's books, Kelly Sheridan, that's K-E-L-L-I-E, -E, Sheridan, <laughs> has her books available on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble and Kobo so, and all so those. So Erica. That's true, I also do. Actually, one of my, my short story collections, and dates is free until the end of today on Amazon, if anyone is curious. Yeah, so run, run and get it. That's K-E-L-L-I-E. -L -L -E. <laughs> Not a link to that and put it in the description. Yeah. Do <laughs> that. <laughs> um, anyone think of any other common things they see in, even in their own writing? Comma over make a lot of mistakes. Commas, yeah, commas, 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 commas. Oh, don't start talking about punctuation. <laughs> <laughs> I think, um, so bad. Yeah. Or unnecessary <laughs> punctuation, like lots of exclamation marks. I'm like, so, yeah. Oh, yeah. shut up, buddy. Yeah, mm. that's bad. I'm so trigger happy when it comes to commas, though. I like put them oh, in, yeah. and then my beta readers will be like, delete, delete, delete. Like, okay. <laughs> I want to put them in there. 
Not exclamation and marks, though. <laughs> another really big thing that I've been noticing lately is people who have really good ideas who are basically relying on the fact that they have a good idea and not going through and trying to smooth out plot holes and mm. character arcs. And while it's cool if you have a good idea, like, every manuscript I read has a cool concept. Like, that's always a nice thing I say in, like, a mm. past letter. It's like, this is a really cool concept. But you missed out on motivation and stakes, and there were some really big plot holes. and. And so it's like, your concept isn't going to be enough to carry your story. I would rather have an okay concept where the plot is really smooth and the character has a really nice arc going. So mm -hmm. just like, make sure to look out for those things when you're revising. Mm -hmm. um, we have a few comments here. Dana says she can never remember her character descriptions, so she needs to make a guide for herself when writing. I recommend it. Mm -hmm. You know, Scrivener, if you use Scrivener, they have yeah. a little side piece for all of your characters. Just jot That's down the description, the role they have. Windows. Wait, what? Not on the Windows one. Oh, they don't? Go Come figures. on, Windows. You can still put it they in your little like, worksheets. Yeah, it's just not as in-depth as the... I find I always do that, like, with eye color for secondary characters. I'm like, oh, his dark eyes. And I'm like, crap, they were blue. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I always always write just a little bit about everything, because if you're going to reference it in the mm -hmm. book, and then you, like, they're short in Chapter 2, but they're really tall in Chapter 8, people are going to be like, is this the same guy or just <laughs> someone with the same name? Yeah. And, uh... Raw Edge said she believes in keeping it simple because readers will almost always picture the character different from how you as the author see yeah, them initially. Yeah, very true. Uh, we, do we go into description of a character in third person point of view? We haven't talked about that. Do we want to talk about third person description? Um, I kept it, I, mine is third person right now, the one I'm working on, I kept it pretty short still. Because it's, yeah. it's still sort of in their point of view, though not Usually yeah. as close. Mm -hmm. We're still not going to really go into what they look like, unless you have a like alternating point of view, and then you can get that in really nicely. I think again, I this is what I like to do. At least I pick a couple of things that I want to highlight about mm -hmm. them, or what makes them significant or unique, and then I just kind of focus on that and don't add too much else. Unless it's, again, unless it's significant. Like, the piece I have up on Wattpad, since it takes place in the 1920s, the way, or 1930s, whoops, <laughs> it's been a while. Uh, the way she looks is important to kind of set the tone for the time. So that's a little bit more in depth than just like a casual brush off of what she looks like. Mm -hmm. Again, yeah. you'll know what feels right, hopefully, or at yeah. least your beta reader should, and be like, this is too much. Yeah, for sure. It's also, like, really depends on the story, too. Like, the only reason, well, like, personally, like I said before, I don't put in a lot of description, usually. The reason I did this time a little bit more is because people are accusing her of being a witch, and because she <laughs> looks like that, like, she mm -hmm. has this stringy black hair and the pale skin and all that, that comes in a little bit more. So I'll describe a bit, but normally I wouldn't, unless it fits in with the story. It yeah. definitely like depends that. on the voice and the, the yeah the tone of the story. Yeah. If it's like more character driven, then I think knowing mm -hmm. what the characters look like is pretty important. Mm -hmm. it, again, it doesn't mm -hmm. have to be that important. It's really up to personal preferences. Yeah, and the readers will decide. Even if it's fine for you, they might think it's not enough or too much, and you'll probably get both of those comments on <laughs> on the same description. So mm -hmm. just do your best. Thank you. <laughs> I think, and part of the reason, like, some readers want a lot of description is, like, some readers like to do, like, fan art and everything. And mm -hmm. so they want to know what the character looks like so that they can make it faithful to the book. Mm -hmm. And I think then if you do, like, what author is going to say, no, I'm not going to send you, like, a sketch yeah, of my character? So you can make fan art. Like, you can just ask an author and be like, mm -hmm. hey, how do you picture them? Mm -hmm. And most of the time they'll tell you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Every now and then you'll get a, I really leave it up to the readers. <laughs> and then I'm just like, but I can't draw. Well, I can't draw anything, but, you know, yeah. if I were an artist, like, I'd say, I can't draw. We don't have 
an image for this character? Like, That's it. I would kind of tend to say as well. Like, if someone has asked me that on Wattpad, I do say. Like, I just leave it up to you guys because people get really attached to how they see their characters, which is, like, when movies get cast, like, that just shows you how people can, like, fly into a rage because of, like, that actor's not right for this role. I didn't picture him this way. And <laughs> Oh, yeah, you saw that a lot with that. Paper Towns this week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Hunger Games, that's what that yeah, is. I was, Megan, you missed this because you were running around before we started, but I was talking about the casting of Margot and how I was surprised. Not necessarily by the looks. The looks, I just didn't know Kara was an actress, so. Yeah. yeah. That was the most surprising yeah. for me. Oh, fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how it goes. We've got another question about, what about starting a book with a dream? Maybe the writer's using the dream sequence to be dramatic, but if it's the first thing I read, I almost always feel cheated cheated by the end of the scene or chapter when it's revealed it's a dream. Have you ever seen it done successfully? No. No. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Actually, Never. I did see one in my creative writing class, but the character was, like, sentient. Like, she knew what was going on in the dream. Like, she could control mm -hmm. what was cool. going on. That's mm -hmm. and that was the only time I've ever seen a dream sequence yeah. done well. Mm -hmm. I think or like had one the dreams, the dreams that Harry has in the Harry Potter books, but they're actually things that are really happening. So yeah, it's yeah. Like, yeah. No, like, it's not like you're like, oh, that wasn't real. Like it is real. Yeah, so. book four started like that. Oh, did it? Yeah, but that's book four. By then, I'm into the series. I don't <laughs> yeah. care. I'm sorry. It could have started with yeah. him waking up and looking in the mirror, and I would have been like, whatever, it's Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> she could have just thrown in every writing trope by yeah. then. Like, okay. I'm fine. <laughs> I'm with you. I accept this. Yeah. What's weird is that like I haven't read a ton of books with dream sequences, but I feel mm -hmm. like it's overplayed. It is. Do you know, mm -hmm. like, it's, it's, it's kind of a cliche at this point. I feel like it's mm -hmm. done I in, like, seen many of it. I think it's been in TV shows a lot more than books. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I see it a lot when I'm critiquing and doing the contest and stuff. For me, it's right up there with running through the woods. Mm -hmm. I can't. And then the alarm yeah. clock goes off, and they wake up, and they realize it was all a dream. Yeah, yeah. I can't. I can't. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so that's I don't think any of us can think of many, any of us can think of like examples where it happens in like a published book. So that tells no. you <laughs> that you see it like beta sure reading it's out there. there but I've definitely read books where first chapters for a dream sequence like that though would just yeah. like if it's at the very first or if it's or if it's at the end where it's like this it was all a dream. I hate that. But I've seen I have some and I have seen it done within within books where it's like. Like uh, Throne of Glass, didn't Selena have a bunch of or Selena have a bunch of dreams, and some of them were dreams, and other like were yeah. Dreams? But it's not like you can't ever put well. a dream in. Like there's no yeah. rule putting dreams in. I just, don't think just don't do it at the, the, yeah, yeah, the beginning. Yeah, yeah, don't do it at the beginning or the very very end. Once you're started and people are into the book, knock yourself out. You can put as mm -hmm. many dream sequences. They put end like always. Yeah. Don't. <laughs> Particularly if it's having like dreams for like if it's related to the story, you know, yeah, like exactly. Selena has like all these the dreams that are related to yeah, all exactly. of them. Exactly, it's gotta yeah. move the plot forward. It can foreshadow things. Yeah. It can, yeah. yeah. See so if there's like magic in your story, and they're having. It like, seems like really shoved down your throat foreshadowing, though. Yeah, like, yeah. There's no either. It's not relevant to the plot, or it's foreshadowing. There, there's really no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like it more when it like. Is telling you things that the character won't admit to themselves. Mm, like when the yeah. character feels like they've hit a wall, and so like in their dream they're looking for something and they can never find it. But even then, like I don't think that should take up more than a paragraph. No. Like, yeah. yeah. It doesn't need much time. Mm hmm. Yeah, like Megan, like you just said, I've seen it done well where it's like you know the characters. Like, I didn't sleep well last night in my dreams. I'm constantly running through a maze or I'm constantly looking through this. And then they move on. That's mm -hmm. fine. And it tells you a little bit about what's going on in their mind at the time. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Any more comments? Yeah, we've hit the about an hour mark. So mm -hmm. Not that okay. I've seen. Okay. Wind it up with uh, last thoughts. Or wind it down, I should say. Um... <laughs> uh... Data reader, like find some yeah. writing friends because a lot you can try to catch on your own, but having a friend is going to make it a lot easier to catch the problems, mm -hmm. and it'll make your writing a lot better. Yeah, mm, for sure. 
If you need help on finding a critique partner, see Megan's video from, was it this week? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I talked about it this week. Last week. This week's over. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's the biggest thing is find a beta reader. Someone who will be honest with you and say, like, look, buddy, this is great writing, but here are all of the mistakes you're making. And I say this with love. Yeah, and then and then accept those edits because I've seen so many people who, like, I've given edits to people who just completely ignore them and it's the worst. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's so bad because it's like, ah, uh, uh, oh, and you put so much time. Work. It, yeah, exactly. You put so much work into that. Having them rejected mm -hmm. is. And anytime I edit anybody's work, I always want them to you know put out the best thing they can. That's why I'm spending my time to help. So yeah, be uh, accept edits. Like no, oh, yeah, so not, like, don't yeah. don't go no, into beta reading. Don't go into beta reading just wanting like a pat on the back. You know, just like yeah. oh, this is such a good idea. I really like it. Like don't go into it for that because that's no. not the point. The it's point is you're going to better. Not to and of course, good. you know, there are going to be edits that you're like, oh, I really am going to listen to that. Or you know, maybe they point something out that is done with purpose to re reveal something later on in the series yeah. or the book. So know what to ignore, but really, for the most part, listen to your edits. Because if your beta reader has a comment like that, your reader is probably going to have a very similar yeah. comment. And you don't want to see exactly what your beta reader says in a negative review. And you're like, oh, yeah. I had a chance to yeah. should have listened. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially if you have more than one beta reader and they're all saying the same thing, then yeah. you know. <laughs> no yeah. matter how much you, you should have idea. It's, it's, like, it's like even yeah. if you like, if the thing they're complaining about for a reason, or maybe you're going to like reveal it later, if everyone's complaining about it, then maybe you need to do it in a different way. Cause it's yeah. Not yeah. People might not get to later in the series because, <laughs> like we were talking about mm -hmm. earlier with like Shatter Me, and I had trouble with it like because the first book, even though some of it might have been done purposely, didn't make me want to read the future ones. So. Mm -hmm. Next week. Mm -hmm. Next Water week, Water Spoken, spoken Book Book Chat. Book Club! <laughs> All Hopefully right. some of you guys have read this already, because it's pretty big, and a week is... And it's so good. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah. Even That's if you haven't so read it, good. there's still time. I, I read that yeah. in a couple of days. Like, uh, it's, really yeah. good. it's really good. It's really mm -hmm. easy to you get You can get the paperback so online pretty. at Barnes & Noble for like six bucks. Yeah. So like, awesome. It's really yeah. an excuse. And it still has the same beautiful <laughs> cover. Yeah, and it's so totally cool. worth it. You so won't good. It. <laughs> oh, the writing. I'm remembering the first time I read it. No mistakes in that. Back. I can't yeah. think of any mistakes. <laughs> You'll see what we have to say on Sunday about this great book. But it I think you kind of know. <laughs> All right. So join us next week for the Daughter of Smoke and Bone book chat. Same time, 7.30 Eastern Standard Time. And I think, does anyone else have any closing comments? <laughs> no? All right. And we, will <laughs> and we will see you guys next week. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Bye. Bye.